Let's begin with the vaccine trials and the decision by AstraZeneca to pause its coronavirus vaccine trial because a patient experienced an adverse effect. Is this concerning to you? Sure. I mean, any time in a, any trial for any drug or vaccine, uh, we need to be sure, especially in the case of a vaccine, when you're giving this to healthy individuals, you're not treating people that are sick, like with a cancer or a severe infection, you're giving a vaccine to people that actually are healthy. If there's something that comes up during that phase three trial that we're discussing, uh, we really need to make sure that that is not in any way related to administration of that vaccine. So uh, all of these trials have uh, pretty standard protocols in place. They do this pause. They do a lot of additional investigation and just make, you know, kind of dig around and make sure that the vaccine uh, itself didn't have anything to do with this necessarily. And Dr. Hines, as we move into the fall and winter months, many are concerned that the common flu will exacerbate the coronavirus pandemic. How do the two intertwine and is this a valid concern? Absolutely. The, uh, so influenza kills tens of thousands of Americans, young and old, every year. Uh, and we've already seen that the coronavirus has claimed the lives of uh, just about 200,000 individuals so far. They are both viruses, and you know we don't have a we have some treatments for the flu, but it is much less virulent compared to uh, compared to COVID-19 and what SARS-CoV-2 has uh, shown itself capable of doing. Um, we don't have curative therapy. We don't have a vaccine yet, of course, and so there are a lot of potential as we head into the winter months, especially in the cooler states. We have situations where we can have people get influenza and uh, SARS-CoV-2 co-infection. So they're both viruses mm. at the same time, which is going wow. to truly make things much, much worse and make it much more difficult to help these folks. Have there been any cases around the world of co-infection yet that we know of? I have not. I have not heard of any in terms of the seasonal flu this, that's that's coming up. That we're the flu season we're about to enter. Um, I'm not aware of any of those, but I believe we're going to be seeing many of those uh, going forward. Which is why the most important thing for people to do is get their flu shots just right away. I mean, we're we're at time, a good time to do it. People should go go out and get it right now. They are available now. The, my question, though, about the flu shot is that we it's always a little bit of a guessing game, correct? The exact strain is never entirely known at this point of the year. So if we get the flu shot now, is there a chance we'll need to get another one in a couple of months? Probably not. What what it, It's for the season, typically. And the, the concern, of course, is if if uh, if the correct uh, if the correct components are not uh, are not you know, engineered or not put into the to, into the flu shot, then you're going to have a less effective uh, influenza vaccine. But even the ones that aren't perfect, and you, we can go back and look at years where it was more or less effective, even when it's not a perfect uh, influenza vaccine, it is still very, very helpful to uh, kind of give the immune system a bit of a preview of what flu could look like and kind of prime it a bit. Uh, and so that's something that I, we, we all still recommend that unless people have a, a severe allergy to one of the components of that flu vaccine, they really should get it, even if there's a chance that it may not be the best flu vaccine. But but not having it would be a far worse option. Right. And of course, as you know, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that children over the age of six months get the flu vaccine. You know, the Academy says either a vaccine or a nasal spray works well for children. And again, as you mentioned, they recommend it be done by the end of October. Why is it especially important for children to get vaccinated this year? So children uh, can, of course, suffer from influenza and can, and in some cases, they can actually die as a result of influenza. Uh, and that's something we've seen previously. So for themselves, of course, for their lives. Uh, but, but I think the biggest reason is to make sure that they are not spreading influenza to others. Uh, we've seen recent studies uh, back on the COVID side of things that demonstrate that that uh, children actually have more, uh, they, they uh, they send out from their nasal cavities more viral particles than even some of the sickest 
uh, adult patients. And, and in, by the same way, we, we need to make sure that even if they're not very symptomatic um, on, for influenza or any viral illness, uh, that, that they are able, that we're able to diminish the spread as much as possible and priming their immune systems and giving their immune systems the ability to resist that influenza and, and, and take care of it quickly and not just spread and spread and spread that infection around will help us to prevent those co-infections we were talking about that could be pose a serious right. health threat to vulnerable adults. That could be devastating right now. So doctor, hypothetically, let's say we get a COVID-19 vaccine by the end of 2020 or early 21. We know we, we've heard from polling, we've heard a lot of voters say, you know, if there's a vaccine that comes too early, I might not trust that it's safe. I, I sort of feel like it hasn't been vetted enough. But the more serious question I think is whether our bodies, especially children, can take a flu vaccine and let's say we have a COVID vaccine available and a COVID vaccine. Will there be any adverse effects of those two together, especially if we don't entirely know the efficacy of the new COVID vaccine? That's a reasonable question. And I, I just to, to the first point, I think uh, I myself, my colleagues, I think uh, the vast majority of folks um, I will certainly be uh, in, in healthcare and public health. Um, we're looking forward to a vaccine, and I will be getting uh, one of the hopefully several options in terms of COVID-19 vaccines once that is available, and once we have, you know, the sign-off of, of all the folks we need, Dr. Fauci, and and the, the, the you know the phase three clinical trials are completed to the satisfaction of the FDA. Uh, so um, I will be looking forward to that personally. Uh, in terms of co-administration of the vaccine, that is something that we will need to we will need to look at. That I I don't think we would recommend giving at the exact same time. For example, uh, influenza vaccine and the the novel coronavirus vaccine once we get it. Uh, right now, that's not an option, but it's something you know that I, I believe that would need to be spaced a bit, which is why getting that influenza vaccine now uh, would be, would allow for, uh, would prevent the need for any sort of um, simultaneous vaccination then. And basically you need, you know, you need 14 days basically for, uh, for our immune systems to kind of figure out what to do with that vaccine. It sort of looks at it and starts to prepare. So you really don't have immunity for two or a little more than two weeks after you have a vaccine flu or otherwise administered. So you do need some time to build up that immunity after administration. Very good advice. Well, Dr. Matthew Hines, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your expertise, medical expertise with us. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.